We have a confirmed DLC for Jurassic World Evolution 2 on the way. But what is the DLC going to be? Hello everybody and welcome to another Jurassic World Evolution 2 Theory video where today we're going to be discussing the topic that is always on our mind when we are waiting for the next DLC. What is going to be the next DLC? Because as of recently we had of course the confirmation that we were getting a new DLC off the truck of having the Carnivore Predator Pack just a few months ago. and. In this video, we're going to discuss the two DLCs I think is very likely. Now the first I'm going to talk about is probably the one that I think personally is going to be coming next. Mainly for two reasons. One is because Frontier on their social medias are posting images of pterosaurs and talking about them. Which, for us fans, basically translates to, we're getting a pterosaur flying pack. And this makes sense with previous history, as in the last DLC before the Predator Pack, we got the Marine Pack, which included dinosaurs such as Nothosaurus, Dunkleosaurus, Shonisaurus, and Archelon. And it's because of this Marine Pack that everyone immediately after that DLC had come out was on the thoughts of, well, we could be getting a Flyers Pack, as after all, ignoring the Deluxe DLC Pack, I'm pretty sure we've only had four pterosaurs that are actually from DLC so far. Even ignoring the fact that we already have the information due to Frontier's latest posts. Now, as for what species I think could be in the flyer pack, I think that there's three that we should talk about immediately that I think most fans would want. Well, technically four, but two of them could basically be in place for either or. The first and most likely for many fans is probably one that everyone would be excited. That is Haxagopteryx, another massive pterosaur, much like the Quetzalcoatlus. The second species I think for me personally, and I think many fans would want, is either Microraptor or Archaeopteryx. And the third one, I think this one would be a love letter to all Walking with Dinosaur fans, that would be the Ramphorhynchus. Those are the three most likely. I know I mentioned Archaeopteryx and Microraptor, but I think it's going to be one or the other for those, not both of them. If they were to do both of them, that would be interesting. But in terms of a third species, there isn't one that I think that is like really going to stand out that people would put on their list. So for that one, I put my own choice in the list. And for me, it would be Nyctosaurus. The reason why I want to have it is sort of to fix the mistake that Barbodactylus had, because Barbodactylus, for those who don't know, does not have a crest the way it did in Jurassic World Evolution 2. It instead had a bony antler sort of crest, and so does Nyctosaurus. And I think because of the backlash that Barbodactylus did receive originally, I think it would be a logical choice to see that guy return have a successor in the form of something like Nyctosaurus. But that's just my opinion. I don't know what the fourth be. None of these are guaranteed after all, but I think with the information that we do already have, the flyer pack is the most likely source. But there is a second one, and that is due to the predator pack. Because like many fans, when I saw the predator packs announcement, I got an odd sensation that we were missing it. As if this was one half of the whole deal. It felt like Frodo without Sam, Woody without Buzz Lightyear, Kirk without Spock, Han without Chewie, or the other way around. Still hurts. George without Fred. Seriously, Austin, are you trying to kill the mood here? Gollum without the ring. Or, you know, Smeagol without Gollum. Actually, no, that's probably for the better of Smeagol's health, and even the ring, so let's say, yeah, those ones separate, good for our health. Life without death, and most importantly, it feels like peanut butter without jelly. 
Seriously, who just eats a sandwich with just peanut butter? Oh my god, what the hell? And of course, what I'm referring to is now that we have a predator pack, we need a herbivore or prey pack. And this would fit very much in line with what we've seen from both games, as in, of course, Jurassic World Evolution 1. Two of their biggest DLC packs were the carnivore and herbivore packs, but I think we should be getting this one, mainly for one fact. We still have one dinosaur from the live action appearances that has yet to make his appearance in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Yes, we are still missing two creatures from Camp Cretaceous, but I don't think those ones are on the list for to come anytime soon, especially from what the game developers have said in the past live streams on how it's very unlikely we will be seeing them. It's not impossible, but it's not likely. But they never talked about a certain dinosaur, which of course we all know, it's Microceratus. We have been begging for Microceratus for almost two years now, which is crazy to think about that Dominion was that long ago almost. Boy, time does not slow down for anything. But with that, we still have been begging since the Dominion Biosyn DLC, and then when the Malta Dominion DLC came, we were wondering as well then when it was going to show up. And many of us thought that originally, well, maybe we could see them all in like a final pack, all the missing species put together. But then Nothosaurus and Tarbosaurus were put into their own, and so it seemed very likely that Microceratus would be the same, and that would be a herbivore slash prey pack. But what species would be joining it, I hear you ask? Well, I do have my own list here, and two of them that I think everyone has been wanting to see include not just Microceratus, but Shangtungosaurus, it is quite known in the fan base of dinosaurs as the tank that does not refuse to stand idly by and just let itself be killed. It is the one doing the killing, and all Isle fans will definitely know exactly what kind of pain that can be. Next is probably one that I myself wouldn't care too much about, but that is Argentinosaurus. And the reason I say I wouldn't care too much about it being in is because I don't think it would really add to the game at all like the possibility of Shangtungosaurus would because of the fact that it's very unlikely still, even though we have asked repeatedly, it's very unlikely we're going to see sauropods be able to defend themselves, i.e., you know, not just get killed by everything including small dinosaurs. But the reason I put this on the list was because it is a very popular sauropod that is yet to be in the game, probably the most popular sauropod yet to be in the game. But in terms of the fourth species, again, I am stumped because there isn't really any that would be like, you know, something that stands out, especially if it's going to be titled something like a prey or herbivore pack, because there's not really ones that would stand out. We already have loads of ceratopsians, loads of stegosaurids, ankylosaurids, but then I got an idea. My idea for a fourth species for a herbivore slash prey pack would be one that would tie into the whole feather concept that Frontier have been going with, with things like Utahraptor, the Utyrannus, where they show off their skills with a feathered version of a dinosaur, and those species have been quite popular. Of course, the feathered pack being probably most people's favorite DLC, mine included, other than the expansions, of course. But one species that I think could use a benefit for that is Ornithomimids, because we already have three in the game, those being Gallimimus, Archaeonithomimus, and of course the Becky himself, Struthiomimus. But they all look very similar, suffice it to say. However, I think that with their whole concept of showing off feathered versions of dinosaurs, like they did with the feathered tyrannosaur and feathered raptor, and them being quite popular in people's minds, I think they could do it again with 
something like ornithomimids because it's one species that I think most people would be very happy to see a feathered version for and myself included. In terms of which ornithomimid, I think ornithomimus itself would be probably the most logical. There could be other options they do, but I just think that that would be the most intriguing idea. And this DLC, I think, could have the possibility of benefiting from that even more, with each species sort of being an improvement on the variety that we already have for herbivores. And this would be another exception. But Again, those are just my opinions on that. I'd love to go into other concepts of like what other things and free updates we could see, but that's going to have to be for another video. But which DLC do you think is likely to arrive first? Or which dinosaurs do you want to see in these DLCs? Or of course for the flyer pack, which pterosaurs do you want to see? For me, I think logically we're going to be getting, based on the pattern of Frontier, the flyer pack first, and with their whole little tease that they just recently did, it's very likely basically confirmed at this point. So for that, I'm going to say the flyer pack is probably first, and we'll be seeing that by the end of March. And in terms of what comes after, we don't have any confirmation yet on other DLCs, but if we do get more confirmation, I think the first one we would see is this herbivore pack. Because everyone just wants Microceratus, damn it. But if you enjoyed this video, guys, and want to see more theory videos, more Evolution 2 tips, tricks, and all the wazoos, and of course series, you know what to do. Leave a like to help support the channel if you feel generous. And if you're feeling extra generous, I'd recommend hitting the subscribe button to join the hunt. Stay safe. And remember guys, you are all amazing, never forget that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!